was in Phil Hong Kong three mm -hmm. months ago announcing that Haven was about to go live. Uh, three months have passed. Uh, quite an exciting journey. Uh, so, as, we, as you said, like Haven is a, a, a f the financial partner for Filecoin storage providers. Because like Filecoin storage providers, they need, after they buy all the hardware, figure out all the software, they actually need to have Filecoin tokens. Well, I'll let you get liquidity. into your talk to tell <laughs> No, no, actually, it, just, it was just like an introduction, saying <laughs> okay. that like three months have passed, have passed and like we have done like, we have, we have been, uh, we have delegated so far 1.1 million Filecoin tokens so far. We have now 1% of the network uh, through Haven. And yeah, we're very excited to be here at Field Brussels and, you know, having this entire week Amazing. Yeah, well, let's see. let's get into what our sponsor Haven Digital Partners has got to say. Thanks, Diogo. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> okay, let me just check if this is. Yeah, this is the one. Okay, so um, as I said, like three months have passed since Haven is is live. So Haven is the is a regulated Filecoin uh, digital asset manager. So basically, what what Haven is is. Um, an investment manager for Filecoin institutional token holders. And what we are here to do is basically to figure out and to help storage providers get access to liquidity so that they can onboard more data and more data capacity to the, to the ecosystem. Because as I, I was saying, after a storage provider buy hardware, figure out the software, they need Filecoin token to pledge as collateral, right? So Filecoin is a, it's not a proof of stake, but like if you want, to, if you are an SP and you want to grow, if you want to com to keep developing the network and get more data storage into the network, you actually need to pledge Filecoin tokens to the network. And so there is a friction, right? So this is a, a challenge that storage providers have they, and they need to figure out, um, which is not their main business, right? So the business of providing storage is not actually looking for capital, which Filecoin token is. So this is our role, right? So we are the ones uh, taking care of this friction and basically providing the bridge between token holders and storage providers. And the reason why we are, um, we are, we are focused on institutional token holders is because the top, like last time I checked, like the top 300 wallets they account for 90% of the Filecoin token. So if there is a, if there is a problem, which is uh, storage providers need access to Filecoin tokens and the Filecoin tokens are within 10%, like 300 wallets, it means that you actually need to convince these large token holders, institutional token holders, Web3 funds, high net worth individuals, professional individuals to actually stake their tokens, to delegate their tokens to the storage providers. So this is like a, a very short introduction about our team, so uh, I found it. Haven, I'm the current CEO. We have uh, David Diaz, probably most of you guys that are working with PL know David. Uh, Azaf is a former head of risk at Anchorage, uh, which is our custodian partner. So we run all of our operation within the Anchorage digital custody platform. We are invested by Protocol Labs and we were invested and incubated by, by Lightshift, which is a Web3 fund. It's, a, it, it, it's actually one of the funds that actually have uh, bags of Filecoin and they wanted to actually to stake Filecoin because they went to the market and said, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't see a product that actually us as a fund can use, like a regulated uh, uh, service that we can use. So they decided, yeah, we want to incubate Haven. You guys have PL on the table. You guys have uh, Anchorage Digital to support qualified custodians. So we want to incubate and we want to actually use your service. So. This is what Haven is. We offer reliable returns for institutional token holders. We are the pin based, although we have started, so we just started like three months ago. So we are, we're actually focused on the Filecoin network. Then we want to go beyond and extend to other pins. And the reason why it's, we talk about the pins and we don't talk like about staking as a whole, it's because actually, if there, there's actually a reason why you go to Binance or OKX or like whatever exchange, you, do, you don't actually see Filecoin staking. It's because you actually need someone to actually taking care of due diligence, credit assessment, and actually figuring out how the SPs are actually running their business, right? Because it's like, they're not like a list of validators running like some Ethereum node, and you can actually stake the ones with the highest reputation. Here you actually need someone to figure out the risk, the assessment, and you actually need to understand how they run the business. And so for Falcon holders, it is basically a tailored, transparent, and secure 
uh, product. Uh, Taylor, because you actually, as a Filecoin holder, you actually get to choose the storage providers you delegate your tokens to and how much you want to do it and for how long, right? So it's t each investor, each Filecoin token holder has their own storage provider portfolio, right? It's not like a fund, it's not like a DeFi pool where you actually just pool risk and assets. Here, the holders actually get to choose. They are presented with what we call the SP report. Basically, we do a storage provider report on each storage provider. We present to the token holders and they get to decide, okay, I, I want to do like 25K, 50K, like 100K feel, like whatever it is to this storage provider, and then they can actually track everything. So that's why it's transparent, because you actually see and you can assess counterparty risk, right? And it's secure because we do all of this through the Anchorage stack, right? So Anchorage is like, I, I would say is the most qualified custodian out there. Um, I leave that up to you too. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's like a, a federal chartered bank, and yeah, so that's why we decided to use, to use Anchorage. So uh, um, how, does, how does Haven actually work? And this, like from now on, the, the price is actually split like in two parts. So how does Haven work for an institutional token holder and how does it work for actual, for the storage providers? So first part, um, for an institutional holder, the first step is the onboarding step. So we do the KYC and AML validation. We actually, we just saw the presentation from Madeira. Uh, it, it is a very important point for us. So we are a regulated firm. We, we do have to provide KYC proofs, AML validation processes. We screen all the wallets we work with. We sign uh, an investment management agreement, which is basically which we are licensed to do. So we are, we, practical terms, we are investment managers of these large token holders, and which is basically like, this is the second step of the onboarding. And then we have the platform registration, which basically is you have, so if you go to avendp.com, there is a section for login. That's where as both SPs and institutional holders, they get to log in and they actually see their dashboard. I'm just, I will show you right after how the platform looks like. So the second step is portfolio design, right? So this is where the tailor-made thing comes into the place. Uh, because you, you as an institutional holder, like these crypto funds, the high net worth individuals, they get to choose the deals and the amounts they want to do. Uh, so we share this SP institutional report, which is basically a three to four page report when we actually show the SP, uh, uh, what's the team, where are they based, where their data centers based, what's their experience, what's their uh, clients, the end clients, the actual clients, enterprise that have the data, who are they. Uh, some, of course, some deal information and forecasts. We have our own forecasting uh, models to accurately forecast uh, block rewards. And we show all of this to the investors and they get to choose, okay, I, I want to do this one, I, I, I don't want to do this one. And then make the decision and we do like all of the underwriting. And we do the underwriting through the Anchorage uh, stack, which basically means that, so the, what Anchorage does specifically is the custody of the deposit addresses of all the holders. So we basically segregate all the assets. So each, each investor has their own wallet, Falcon wallet to deposit. Um, and then we transfer the, so the investor tells us, okay, I, I want to delegate X amount of tokens to the storage provider. We transfer, uh, after we take the ownership, so which is, I'm not sure if you guys know that, how it works within Falcon. There are like two kind of wallets for a storage provider to act. One is the SP actor address, which are basically the wallets that pledge the tokens to the blockchain. And there is the owner address, which is a wallet that actually controls and can actually move the funds out of this wallet. So if you, if you are a storage provider and you have tokens in your SP actual address, if you don't have access to your owner address, the only thing you can do is pledge tokens, which is what we want them to do, right? It's just to pledge tokens. We don't want SPs to run away with the tokens, right? So that's why Anchorage provides the custody of the owner address, which is basically the only address who can actually move the funds away from the, uh, from the storage provider. So we take ownership of this wallet and it's Anchorage who basically holds the private key of this wallet. So it's why Anchorage, that's why we say Anchorage is our custodian throughout the entire period of the, of the deals. Uh, third part is, so after, after the holders decide, okay, I want, to the, I want to do deal X and Y, you can actually track the performance of your storage providers in our dashboard. And this is real time, it's 24 seven. You actually, let me share, okay. Yeah, so you can actually check like a list of your storage providers, how much you have delegated, 
net rewards, what's your gross and net APR of, after our, our fee, um, you, you, you will have information about their performance, their uptime, how much faults they have, how much recoveries they have, um, how much slashing fees they have incurred so far. So you can actually track your counterparty risk. And then there is the distribution, which is like, of course, the most important part for our holders is to get healed, right? It's to get uh, returns for our holders. And the way we do it is we do a, a revenue share uh, model. So basically we divide the block rewards 50-50 with the storage provider. So the storage provider gets half of the block rewards that they get. And the, our holders get the other half, 50%. And we uh, take, a, take a cut out of this 50% uh, that are attributable to the, to the token holders. So for storage providers, so this is, this is for token holders. Basically, we offer safe, transparent, customizable, tailor-made yield on Filecoin. And for storage providers, what we offer is liquidity, predictability, and efficiency. So liquidity is pre pretty obvious. Uh, storage providers, they need Filecoin tokens to expand, to grow within Filecoin, and we give them access to it. We, we give them access to institutional capital, institutional Filecoin, which Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to do, to, to do it because they are storage providers. They are not storage, financial, skilled <laughs> providers, right? Some of them are, of course, but like the majority, they have uh, some constraints to basically to, to tap into this and to talk to institutional holders, right? Either because they don't have the contact or they don't have basically the skills to, to do it, right? It's hard enough to sell data storage solutions to clients, so we, we all, as, we, as a community, we want storage providers to be focused on what they're doing best, right? Which is storing data, selling uh, data storage solutions to clients and basically leave all these financial uh, nightmares to, to, other, to other folks like, like us with David. And it's efficiency because you actually, we don't ask collateral, right? So we don't, we don't ask, well, we don't ask typical collateral, right? Because what collateral means is that basically there are tokens that are hidden and they are not efficient, right? So what we ask is an SP contribution, right? So the SP contributes a, a, a percent, which in our case is 5%, to the address, right? So imagine that we have like a 100K fill deal. We ask the SP to contribute 5%. And those 5%, and I'll show you after how we manage this risk, the, the difference between Haven and the other providers is that the other providers actually stay this collateral hidden in a wallet, right? So because if there is any... Like anything going wrong, they have the, that, uh, that those assets sit there basically to take care of the risk. What we do is, okay, if we have control of the owner address, we, we don't actually need to have these hidden resources, right? So what we ask the SPs is actually to pledge this 5% into the network. So the KWP gets higher, there is more data into the network, and there are more block rewards for, for AVEN, for investors, and for, and for SPs. So that's why it's, it's an efficient product. So how does work for, for an SP? Again, four, four steps. The first one is a due diligence process, financial and operational assessment. We pretty much ask for operational and financial information. To the SP, we do the same KYC and AML uh, validation. Uh, we sign a legal agreement, like an off-chain actual legal agreement and enforceable. Um, we sign a general agreement, then we have like a term sheet template, then we can just pretty easily, like a two-page document that we sign agreements like on a daily basis if it's needed or more like weekly basis, daily basis would be operational a nightmare. Uh, then it, then is, there is a platform registration. We actually have a different dashboard for SPs where the SPs can actually track their um, information. Then there is second step, of course, to fill disbursement. We, we, uh, as I was saying, we, we send 95% of the deal to the, to the SP. The SP sends 5%. Uh, the rewards, again, are shared 50-50 between the, the source provider and the the token holder, and just to make it clear, our cut is based, comes apart from this 50%. And this is a very important slide if you guys are into like risk and you guys don't like risk as, as we don't like. Uh, so we basically spend 95% of our time taking care of these 1% probability events. That's what we, basically that's what we are here for. It's basically to reduce risk, we cannot call it risk free, a risk free product. There is no such thing as risk free. But our goal is always that the investors, the token holders always get their tokens and their block rewards back at like Armageddon scenarios, right? So and what, uh, what does it mean like to have like 
an Armageddon scenario. Of, like, what doesn't happen on chain when there is like I don't know a flood or like the data center just got up on fire? Like anything extreme happen? We want our investors to get their tokens back plus the rewards that they got so far. So that's why we have the SP balance. So the SP balance and the SP minimum balance are two concepts that we use to manage risk and to mitigate risk. So SP balance is basically the 5% initial contribution that I talked to you about. And again, the SPs cannot run away with this money because we are the ones who have the ownership and these actually are pledge into the Filecoin uh, blockchain. And then there is the reserve rewards, which, which is uh, a fancy word uh, for block rewards that are attributable to the SPs, the 50% that are attributable to the SPs. And when the SP balance is higher than the minimum balance, so basically when this starts to happen, that's why we have these ups and downs here, uh, the SP gets paid, right? Because the risk is mitigated. And the risk is a sum of termination fee. This is basically how much does it cost on chain to terminate uh, the entire storage provider uh, operation, right? So imagine there is a, a fire at the data center, data center is gone, this is how much you're gonna pay, or this is how much you're gonna, the SP is gonna be slashed in the protocol. And of course, the, it's, it comes from this bal SP balance, like this, all these fees, so this is termination fee, and then there is like fault fee and invalid proof fee that are like, it's, I, it doesn't, um, doesn't need for us like to go through what, what they are, but basically are like, Slashing events, slashing, there are like slashing events that slash f fill, and it's the SP who actually pays for this, right? Because it's, they're the ones managing the operation. So yeah, so this is how we manage risk. And of course this is like our dashboard, and my time is gone, and yeah, right on time. If you guys have any questions, just shoot, I'll be around. Thanks. Thank you, Diogo. Thank that you. was awesome. Thank you to Haven Digital Partners.